It's one of the world's greatest places, according to Time magazine. The line to get in snakes down the road. Enter and find art all over, hanging on pristine gallery walls and installed in the middle of hallways. The revolving exhibits are constantly changing. Take one turn and a video installation is playing. Take another and a concert is underway. The Cuban cigar being smoked at the patio bar is the giveaway that we are still in Havana. This is the hottest and hippest late night spot in the city, Fabrica de Arte Cubano. On this night, the main stage is rocking as the Grammy-nominated group Tank and the Bangas from New Orleans has the crowd going wild. There's an obvious hunger for the creative in Havana. The art scene is thriving. On Paseo del Prado, the main promenade, souvenir-type pieces are set up and for sale. On a residential road, a local painter opens his home to visitors, his entryway filled floor to ceiling with a collection of his friends' works. Our main goal is this gallery, it just bring culture and art to the people of this neighborhood. Amen Peru Goria is a gallerist at Galleria Taller Goria in Havana's San Isidro neighborhood. Amen's father, famous Cuban actor Jorge Peru Goria, opened the gallery in 2016. Antes era una panadería. It was a bakery and my father bought it. He decided to do this project because this neighborhood was one of the poorest neighborhoods in this area. Over the past several years, the Cuban government has permitted private galleries like this to open. When uh, you are going to have an exhibition in an official gallery, everything has to be run by the state. So you present a project and they tell you if it's accepted or not. Here, somehow, we have more flexibility and like, it's easier to work with artists. Some of that work is provocative. This entire show celebrates the legacy of Alberto Yarini, the so-called king of San Isidro, who ran Havana's red light district before being killed by a rival in 1910. All of the works in the exhibition, inspired by this quotation, which loosely translated, says the man still walks in the streets of the city today, the owner of a crown that no other chulo or pimp could ever wear. Uh, Peru Goria says Cuba is not as conservative as some may think. The gallery does stay neutral when it comes to politics, but has hosted exhibitions exploring topics including women's rights and sexuality without any government repercussions. Nunca hemos tenido hasta ahora ningún problema. We never have any problem with them. We actually present like the stuff we show here to them and they, they have been always receptive about it and they always collaborate with us. Goria has found success cultivating artistic expression within the system. The same goes for Fabrica de Arte, which is classified not as a private business, but as a community project. And so it operates on government property, but with considerable independence. Repression still happens. The revolution is still celebrated. But there is an emerging Cuba, young energy and an appetite for growth cautiously challenging the status quo. And that is Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Anthony Everett. Have a good evening, a good weekend. See you back here on Monday night.